Good Friday morning, and this is this interesting exchange between uh, Job and God, and God saying, were you here when I created the universe? Were you here? Do you know anything about all of this? Because he says, you're a smart guy, but do you really know it all? Do you, have, do you have the comprehension that I have as God to see all things correctly? And then Job's great response. I'll read it to you, okay? I don't, I'm not doing too well on this, but I'll do my best, all right? It said still, I'm struggling here. You can see I just got in from Lily. I hope she doesn't start barking up a storm again. This is God speaking. Lord addressed Job out of the storm cloud. Have you ever in your lifetime commanded the morning and shown the dawn its place for taking hold of the ends of the earth till the wicked are shaken from its surface? Have you, have you ever in your lifetime commanded the morning, shown its place, taking hold of the ends of the earth, even for the sake of the wicked are shaken from, the surf, from its surface? The earth is changed as is clay by the seal and died as though it were a garment. But from the wicked, the light is withheld and the arm of pride is shattered. This is God talking. He said, there's final justice here for the wicked. The wicked, the light is withheld from the wicked. There is no wisdom for the wicked. And the pride, and pride is shattered. Human pride is shattered. See? Have you entered into the source of the sea or walked about the depths of the abyss? Have the gates of the death of death been shown to you? Or have you ever seen the gates of darkness? Have you ever seen the ultimate realities, you see? Have you comprehended the breath of the earth? Tell me, if you know all, which is the way to the dwelling place of light? And where is the abode of darkness? That you may take them to their boundaries and set them on their homeward path. Where are they? Show me. You know, because you're born before them. The number of your years is great. You think you know it all. Now look what Job says. This is the great response of a creature to the creator. And Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am of little account. What can I answer you? I put my hand over my mouth. Though I have spoken once, I will not do so again. Though twice, I'll do so no more. I'm not going to raise the question with you anymore. That's the, see, that is the response of the creature to the creator. In some ways, Wisdom reduces us to silence. There's certain questions we can only answer through trust. We can't figure them all out. And why, in a sense, to be honest about it, one of the great lessons that I learned over the course of my, my life, my both religious and professional life, was the limits of human reason. If, if philosopher doesn't know the limits of human reason, the limits of human reason, nobody does. It's hard to be an arrogant philosopher when you're such on the edge of, you're on the edge of human, human knowledge, when you're asking the ultimate questions. What is it to exist? And how do I know? Okay. Being in epistemology, metaphysics and epistemology, what is it to be real? And how do I know it? And once you put those questions, it was all the way back to the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, five centuries before Christ. Once you raise that question, you are raised to the level of total human humility before the reality of truth, goodness, and being. Because you know you don't have the answer. You know you're groping for it. But it isn't a final answer. And the reason it isn't a final answer, I think, is this. And the Greeks saw it, too. They just didn't have an answer for it. it was that time is perishing, to quote Whitehead. The time is perishing. And in the end, our knowledge is perspectival. It's from a point of view. It's from an angle. It's temporalized. It's localized. Perspectivized, as it were. And therefore, never radically complete. Life's ultimate meaning is elusive. Unless you have faith. And the faith is not a philosophical set of propositions that are true, false, and debatable. It is a personal encounter with God. And it's the truth. It's a personal encounter with Christ and through Christ to the Father in the, with the, due to the possession of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of faith within us. That's the truth. It's an act of faith. I think Lily's about to start barking again. I <laughs> hear her growling. <laughs> Lily has a mind her own. She has her own wisdom. She, She's, she doesn't even have to see something to bark at it. All she has to do is wake herself up from sleep. She barks for 10 minutes then. 
<laughs> so me thinking, where is he? Where is the enemy? I said, Lily, you're your own. <laughs> anyway. But, you know, I'm just I'm just distracted now by my little girl over there barking up a storm. But the truth is, and I, and I mean that, and I'm not dismissing philosophy. Philosophy is a rigorous discipline. It's a wisdom. But it is radically finite because it cannot embrace the fullness of the fullness of eternity, which, which is, which, what's the word I want? Which redeems time from the passage of time. It gives an eternal perspective on time. And it's personal. It's not a set of true propositions. It's personal. It's the encounter with Christ himself. I believe that. I believe that. I think I'm a good enough, well, I ain't mean, a good one. I mean, good enough, okay, to know its limitations. And I know that if we're going to hold on to the meaning of life in the face of evil just with Job, then that searching after that vindicator, that vindicator lives, we have is personal. And that vindicator is God himself in the person of Christ, crucified, died and risen. The Paschal Mystery is the ultimate wisdom. We passion speak about the wisdom of the cross. If that ain't true, ain't nothing true. The wisdom of the cross. And I believe that and I mean it. It's a final truth. Either you believe it or you don't. If you believe it, then there is a wisdom that emerges. You see it in a genius like Thomas Aquinas, St. Bonaventure, the great, great intellectual history of the church. Because then you can embrace the philosophical world with love, the whole scientific world. Because you, bra- and embra- you embrace the wisdom of the world and all its finer truths through the, you embrace it through the wisdom of the cross. You don't seek wisdom from the world, you seek wisdom in the cross. But in so doing, you're free to grasp the beauty and power and genius of the scientific philosophical world. You see it in its perspective. You don't give it more than it's worth, but you give it all that it's worth. I love philosophy. I'm glad I'm a philosopher, not a theologian, because I'm allowed to share with the world its best reflective thought. But what makes it a wisdom for me is the fact that I believe ultimately in Christ and who Christ is and what he did on Good Friday and how his father raised him on, on, on Easter Sunday. I actually take John seriously. St. John's Gospel, he's triumphant on the cross itself. And that allows me to read the philosophers, pagan and otherwise, with great love and respect to engage their thought and find in it a wonderment of genius, human genius, yes, but also its finitude, its limits. See, its limits. Christ transcends those limits and hence those limits don't become an embarrassment but part of the very beauty of philosophy and science the arts the human arts their very finitude becomes beautiful because in their finitude they share in the great mystery of christ himself that's the truth all things fill up those things wanting in the suffering of christ for the sake of the church all things life and death it's human suffering, but human success as well. See? The beauty of the world is transformed into a holy beauty. It's beautiful in itself, in, and it's finite. The beauty of the world is beautiful in itself and is finite. In a sense, and it's temporal, in its sense, through Christ, the beauty of the world is not only good and beautiful in itself, but it's eternally beautiful in itself in Christ, in itself and in Christ. I believe that. Beauty and love are eternal in the beauty and love of Christ. Real in themselves, eternal in Christ. I don't know if I said that right, but it's what I believe.